Welcome to this week's worship service for Trinity United Church for May 30th, 2021. My name is Abigail and I am the Children and Youth Ministry Developer and will be filling in this week for Reverend Beckett who is on study leave. Registration for Vacation Bible School is now open and we've got lots of great activities in this year's virtual VBS. Please visit our website for additional details. Thank you to the Sunday School, our volunteers, and my family for assisting in this week's service. Today is Trinity Sunday. Now let us worship. Christ is the light of God. The Holy Spirit is like a flame, steadfast with the power to move us. May we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit as we light this candle. Let every day be a day that we welcome the divine light. And may the birth of each new day bring us closer to God and to one another. Open our hearts and minds to the Holy Spirit that surrounds us and the Holy Spirit that lives within us. Blessed are we who are touched by the Trinity. May we meditate on the teachings of Jesus and help us to understand God's plan for us in God's holy place. Let us worship. God in three persons, who is merciful and mighty, be with us in this time of worship. Help us to believe in that which we do not see, and help us to understand that which you sent your Son to teach us. May we feel the splendor of your holiness and embrace the strength that you give us. Bless us with your healing powers and guide us in unity. Amen. Our first scripture today comes from Psalm 29. Praise the Lord, you angels of his. Praise his glory and his strength. Praise him for his majestic glory, the glory of his name. Come before him clothed in sacred garments. The voice of the Lord echoes from the clouds. The God of glory thunders through the skies. So powerful is his voice, so full of majesty. It breaks down cedars. It splits the giant trees of Lebanon. It shakes Mount Lebanon and Mount Syrian. They leap and skip before him like young calves. The voice of the Lord thunders through the lightning. It resounds through the deserts and shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord spins and topples the mighty oaks. It strips the forest bare. They whirl and sway beneath the blast. 
but in his temple all are praising glory glory to the Lord at the flood the Lord showed his control of all creation now he continues to unveil his power he will give his people strength he will bless them with peace what is the Trinity Trinity is defined in the dictionary as a group of three people or things in the church we know the Trinity as God Jesus and the Holy Spirit you may have heard that we are created in God's image so how are we like the Trinity well if you think about it we have a mind a body and a spirit our mind helps us learn how to take care of and nurture our body. Our body allows us to do things for ourselves and helps us take care of others. And while our mind may help us know what is right and wrong, our spirit helps us to feel and choose what is right. Our spirit also helps connect us with God and other people. Together, our mind, body, and spirit help us to be whole persons who learn to love ourselves and others. So how can we show our gratefulness to God for the gift of being made in God's image? We can treat each other, ourselves, and everything on earth with respect and care. How will you show your appreciation for the Trinity? Our second scripture comes from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Today we celebrate the Trinity sometimes known as three persons in one. Trinity is also our church's namesake. The Trinity is celebrated amongst many churches across various denominations to honor our belief in the divinity that consists of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. God created everything in the universe, a system so complex that for generations upon generations who have lived in it, observed and studied it, 
many questions remain unanswered, and often answers lead to more questions. In our life's journey and in our voyage of self-discovery, it can be difficult to navigate our relationship with the Trinity. Is defining the Trinity the key to understanding our relationship with God? Or does our relationship with God help us to understand the Trinity? In the scriptures, when Jesus is replying to Nicodemus, he questions, how can we be reborn? Jesus is quick to point out that even Nicodemus, a scholar and leader, quickly, quickly aligns his thoughts with the physicality of existence when our connection with God is largely spiritual. When I was very young, I was quite baffled by the idea of the Trinity. How can God be God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit all at the same time? How can God be responsible for or allow the death of his son and how can God know everything but not control the Holy Spirit? I remember when I was very young, I could not comprehend why God would punish good people with terrible things like disease, war, suffering, and death. In Psalm 29, God's voice is so mighty that it can shake Mount Lebanon and Mount Syrian. God's power is so great that it controls all of creation which can be completely reset by a great flood. It was not until I was much older that I began to understand the complexities of God's creation and power. I began to observe the comforting support that would often surround someone in their moments of deepest pain and grief, and began to learn that like parents, God does not revel in our suffering and sadness, but helps to lift us out of hopelessness and despair. In the psalm, we also learn about God's willingness to give strength to people and show mercy through peace. While God created a world that has both good and bad, it doesn't mean that God wants us to feel pain. God is very much like a parent who watches from afar as their children learn from mistakes. Like a parent, God doesn't fix everything for us. Without experiencing some of life's most challenging moments, we would not grow into the people we were meant to be. I recall when I was about three years old, I had a nightlight that I no longer felt the need to have on. I didn't unplug it because my logic did not yet resemble that of an adult, despite my parents' constant reminders that I sure behaved like I thought I was all grown up. Instead, I found an old tin can and decided that I would simply cover the nightlight whilst it was still plugged into the wall and turned on. I recall a very loud popping sound and the smell of smoke, not to mention my parents running into the room yelling, what did you do? But I didn't feel their anger or frustration in a manner that made me think they were upset with me, rather, I felt their genuine concern that I was okay which thankfully everything was, except for a bit of char on the wall, there was no actual fire or injury. God helps us like a parent, guiding us when we sometimes get lost, but allows us room to forge our own path. God loves us like a parent. Despite our dealings with conflict and turmoil, God supports us, forgives us, and loves us unconditionally. But like children, we learn that what we receive in life is not automatic privilege. We must earn our way to the results that we desire. We may struggle, we may falter, we may fail. We sometimes, if not often, learn things the hard way, even when we have evidence before us of what will not work, we are sometimes tempted to do it anyway. Like a parent, God loves us, even when we make bad decisions repeat mistakes, but like a parent, God holds us accountable. God helps us try to do better and be better. Like a flame, the Holy Spirit is both constant and evolving. It remains glowing and intensely vibrant. It flickers and dances. It gives off energy as it moves, yet it can remain relatively in place. The Holy Spirit was sent to us, a living piece of God within us, to help when we are in need, to give us strength when we feel weak, 
to reach out to one another, to connect with God when we feel disconnected, to inspire us to help others, and to spark the light within others who may be experiencing darkness. I believe that we are born of the Spirit, that the obvious joy and hope of a child and the wonderment that a child brings is a gift. But sometimes that spirit is lost. Sometimes experiences and circumstances cause doubt and denial. Sometimes we have to choose to reconnect with the spirit as adults. This reminds me a great deal of the lessons that Jesus was trying to teach Nicodemus about being born again. Choosing to acknowledge the spiritual side of life is important to connecting us with God and with one another. This isn't a choice that we only have to make once. This is something we can choose every day. Jesus referenced Moses leading in the desert. At the time, even Moses had doubts, but was committed to following God's teaching. Perhaps Jesus was helping Nicodemus to learn to focus not on what others doubt, but on what we know of God to be true. It is important to note that Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a ruling member of the Jewish council. Jesus was teaching a teacher. I recall a time that as a fairly new parent with a young toddler, the lesson that in teaching, sometimes you really need to explain things quite thoroughly. I learned this the hard way whilst living in a nice new apartment in Southern California. One day after finishing up something in the kitchen, I walked into the living room to find my little toddler with a very vibrantly colored crayon drawing on the wall. Now, if you recall when I was young, I had the not so brilliant idea of the tin can covering the nightlight. Well, also around the same age, I had the idea to color on the wall, but I did know that it was wrong because I chose to do so behind my brother's bed where no one could see me. So perhaps this moment with my child was a lesson I needed to learn too. It occurred to me that I never explicitly told my child not to draw on the wall. So I did have to explain that when I said that we color in coloring books, that it also meant that we do not color on the walls or any other place other than in the coloring books. I had my child try to wipe off the drawing from the wall and I was happy to continue cleaning the mess. After which I also contacted my brother to apologize for the actions of my younger self. My brother responded with laughter. It is a valuable message to share the idea that we don't know everything, that learning is very much lifelong. It is also important to understand the context of the teaching as the legacy of the Pharisees is that of piety and learning. Before this and before Jesus, Jewish law was interpreted in a specific way and other interpretations were cast aside. So perhaps Jesus was encouraging Nicodemus to connect with the Spirit to help Nicodemus understand that though steadfast, the Spirit also moves. This is perhaps what we see in the living Word of God today. Perhaps this particular moment of teaching has helped us to understand that there is no one way to live that will be perfect. That there is not one way to connect with God. God doesn't want us to hurt each other by fighting over Jesus and fighting over laws and lessons, but perhaps God wants us to form our own relationship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Perhaps the holiness of God is not understanding the individual components and how they work together, but rather their presence within each of us, how we connect with God. Jesus and the Holy Spirit to understand, care for, and love one another. Amen.
Bless our gifts with your spirit, that what we offer may reflect the love you have given us. Thanks be to God. Loving God, who gives us strength and peace, bless us with your Trinity, that we may experience the relationship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, as you have envisioned for us. Help us to reach out when we need you, and take time to understand you, not by defining you, but by defining ourselves through love and our actions of love towards others. We ask for your guidance in navigating difficult relationships when we don't understand others. We ask that you help us to lead with empathy, not judgment, to seek connection, not just boundaries. We ask that you help us to remember that learning is a lifelong journey and that life is a precious gift. In these uncertain times, may we reflect upon the challenges that you have witnessed and find comfort in the resilience you have bestowed upon us. That even through our times of feeling helplessness and hopelessness, that you believe in us. We ask for your patience when even we ourselves know that we are making poor choices, even when that choice is a simple act of silence. Help us to forgive ourselves and to forgive others as you have demonstrated in the most loving way. Help us to not delight in the discord or discomfort of others, as we are sometimes tempted to seek confrontation anonymously behind keyboards, tablets, and phones. Help us to help others in whatever way we are able, even if that means doing things that seem difficult or scary. Help us to stop mistaking mercy for weakness and change for losing integrity. Help us to seek meaningful ways to show we care. May your holiness make us whole. We ask all these things, praying together.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain and abide with us all. As this candle goes out, may we carry God's light within our hearts, leading the way with love. Thank you.